Hi, Mark here from the Tangibound Podcast Network and host of the flagship show, the Tangibound Podcast. Did you know that we over at Tangibound are always looking for amazing podcasts to promote? And did you also know that we are also proud nerds and geeks of everything from movies, music, gaming, TV shows, and comic books to wrestling, MMA, soccer, and football? Whatever you can nerd or geek out about, we've got it. And if you're interested, we can help you find it. And if you're a show looking for a place to call home, we've got you covered. Side effects may include upset stomach, dizziness, tumors, shakes, and in some rare cases, death from excessive laughter. So to be fair, it's only sometimes. Other side effects may include diarrhea, gallstones, heart palpitations, and strong desire for cookies on the dark side. Talk to your doctor and visit TangiboundNetwork.com and see if Tangibound Network is right for you. Life, everyone. My name is Jen. I am your hostess for the day. And with me, as always, we have Hanno and Brian. Hey, guys. Howdy. Hi. And because I usually say this towards the end, I'm going to say this in the beginning. If you would like to be our fourth mic, if you would like to be on with us, let me know. Let hmm. us know. There's plenty of ways to reach us. Um, you found us because you're listening. So I'm sure you can find us anywhere you look, Facebook, you know, all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'll save that for later. But I just wanted to throw that out there um, that uh, Clint is one of our special friends that comes on and not, you know, short. Uh, special just and, yeah, just keep just keep I moving know. forward. Don't try to correct it. Yeah, I know. You I'm just, not gonna I'm not gonna correct it anymore. Clint, I know you're out there laughing. So yeah. I guess that's the point. Yeah. We love you. Uh, That's definitely <laughs> one of those scenarios where all you do is just keep digging. <laughs> At some point, you should be like, I'm just going to get out of this hole. From the hole that I dug myself in. Exactly. <laughs> Anyways, folks, so... I wanted to throw that in actually at the beginning just uh, to let you know that you're more than welcome. We'd love to hear from you and hear your thoughts and ideas. And if you want to come on, just let me know and we would love to talk to you. So that being said, I was not on the podcast last week. That means nope. I got to go first, right? right? Yep. Yep. Them's the rules. Yep. Them's, Them's the, rules rules. Be the rules. Yep. <laughs> uh, well, so I have been busy. Uh, last week I had to work, unfortunately, so I wasn't able to be on the show. But um, from the work update, this week I only put in 43 hours. So, which is a Man. huge step up. That's like a and vacation. Right, right. <laughs> and I am taking all three of my normal days off. I'm taking them all three off. And uh, a few eyebrows were raised. Um, they're like, you're taking all three? And uh, it's like, yeah, I'm working a normal 40-hour week. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, yeah, they may not be exactly thrilled with the whole idea, but I've got full coverage. There's someone there that that normally is supposed to be doing my job and she will be there. So there's really no real reason for me to be in there other than as backup support or to do other things like special projects or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, and they did not mandate me to be there nor request it, honestly. Yeah, so there you go. I'm just yep. like, you know, Hey, yeah. As we talked before, it's like, if they're, you know, if, if no one asks you to be there, you don't have to be there. 
You know, it'd be different if they had asked for everyone to stay extra or work extra, I mean, and, you know, and you were like, meh. <laughs> <laughs> but even then, unless they say it's mandatory, you know, it's just like, well, I don't feel right? like it. Yeah. It's the whole flair conversation. And, folks, if you haven't watched the movie Office Space, Woo! I recommend it. Highly recommend it. Oh, you don't mean Ric Flair? Yeah. <laughs> no. The Nature Boy, Wrong no? podcast. All right, Wrong fine. podcast. Dang it. Wrong podcast. <laughs> but yes, Ric Flair is also awesome. But the movie Office Space and wearing Flair, the whole conversation there around that is priceless. Yeah, it so. is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Have you seen the show, Hannah? Uh, yeah. Mm. Okay. Just, just making sure. I figured as much. It is funny because it's one of those movies that just about everybody seems to have seen. But at the same time, I'm never surprised when someone's like, I haven't seen it, you know, because it really didn't. It did terrible in the box office. You know, it didn't gain its success until it hit video. You know, Mm -hmm. for kids listening, that was what streaming was. But it used to come on these big plastic things called tapes. (laughs) Or You actually have to stick them inside a machine yeah. that you bought separate. Yeah, you didn't have um, access to well. everything ever made at one time. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you had to actually leave your house to go get it. <laughs> Back in the day, mm-hmm. those awful, awful walks to the to the video store. Yeah, had to deal with jerks like me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. or even worse, a jerk like Tony. I mean. Phew. Oof, he he doesn't he doesn't listen. Jeannie does, but he doesn't. Yes. <laughs> so ha, ah, and she'll agree. So it's fine. There you go. There you go. <laughs> so now that we just dropped Funny. a bunch of inside jokes and whatnot. <laughs> For those of you who uh, who don't listen to the um, oh my gosh, the Brian's other podcast. <laughs> you mean language. salty language? Yes. Oh my goodness. It is pretty Lost new. I did just start doing it. So You did just, <laughs> just <laughs> seven years ago. Just the other day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um anyways, yeah, voice strange voice in the background. <laughs> <laughs> anyways, uh let us continue. So work was work is going well and so that part is, is settled down and home life is actually doing pretty good too. You know, the, uh, my meds, um, are pretty straight and which is kind of awesome. I'm feeling really good and really positive. Um, I had one small, it's not even a relapse per se, but a, um, blip on the radio. But I'm also trying to stop smoking, so you know. Mm, okay. That's a good. That's a really. That's a really losing good. Losing your temper is natural life. Mm-hmm. I was gonna say that's a really good test of your medicine. Yeah. Like to see if the dosage is good. <laughs> <laughs> Can it withstand? You know, yeah. with handle the uh, going through nicotine withdrawal. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, it's. So I yeah, I did lose my temper at work a bit, but it was justified and it wasn't extreme. So to me, I put that into the realm of me as a person, not me as a with you know, not my mental illness intera- interacting with me. Right. If that makes any sense. Cuz I really strong you know, been focusing hard on trying to make sure I understand that my mental illness doesn't define me. Mm-hmm. It's just a part of me. Yeah. And I have to be, you know, I ha- my medicine can only, con- I only want it to control so much. The other is my free will. And me as a person and me as the, as a unique individual, I am going to lose my temper. I am going to have meltdowns and stuff like that as a person. We all do. Mm-hmm. So I can't, not expect that to happen on occasion, especially when there's extreme pressures or extreme things happening in my life. You know, sure, I'm going to get mad. I should get mad. I'm. It's realistic. Yeah, yeah. It's anger sad. is an appropriate response sometimes, for sure. Yeah. yeah. So, 
so yeah, other than that, that was kind of like one of my, my things, my ahas that I kind of was just, I was working through a bit, but really just, um, you know, this last two weeks, I've been doing a lot of just trying to focus on, on enjoying the moment, enjoying the found energies that I've gotten and, uh, and being productive. Wow. I think she's asking who wants to go next. That was yeah. terrible. That broke up so bad. Uh, I got none of that. Yes. Was I right? Yeah, okay. I was going by what inflection I heard. Because <laughs> <laughs> just showing how well I, I pretty much know you. Um, I'll go next. Um, it's weird. The last time I was in therapy, when she asked how I was doing, it was the first time I've said good in a long time. And wow, cool. I still feel that way. Like, I, I think I go this week for another appointment and I'll be saying the same thing. Um, over the last few days, oddly enough, I've gotten, um, I, I had to go to the doctor's office the other day. So while I was there, I set up an appointment with my psychiatrist. I, um, and then that day I also set up a, a uh, to get my eyes checked. Cause my doctor's been on me about that a few times. <laughs> um, you know, so I set that up. I set up, I forgot what it was, but basically I had a, I had a list of eight things that I wanted, really wanted to get done. And, uh, that day I got five of them done. And then I started, cause I'm going to sell some of my magic cards on eBay. Um, I've taken a ton of pictures and done a bunch of write ups for that. So I'm, I'm getting closer to having that done. And that's something that's on, on that list of things I wanted to get done. I'm now down, up to six. I have two things left to do. One is a phone call. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll see how long that takes, but, <laughs> um, and actually real quick while we're talking about that, I wanted to bring up a little bit. We talk about this on salty language a little bit, but did you guys see that Google just, uh, kind of showed off a, um, it's an auto or it's an AI system that will schedule appointments for you and can sync them to your Google calendar. So like if I call or if I talk to it and I'm like, Hey, I want to, you know, I need to make a, a dentist appointment. Here are the days that are best for me. Here are the times it will call and try to, and it will tell them what the best things are and then agree to a, a thing. And then, like I said, from what they were saying, you can have it imported right into your Google calendar so you'll know what days it is and stuff. And Fluffy Bunny Ash, well, if you don't listen to Salty Language, you won't know. Anyway, my friend Ashley told me about it and because she heard me talking on, I think, Salty Language about how I don't like making phone calls. And when I heard this, I was like, wow, this could be really huge for people who don't like making phone calls because you can do this without talking to, you know, calling five places. You could just have your phone do it, you know. Um, <clears throat> or realistically, depending on your scenario, you, someone else probably could use your phone to schedule it for you, you know, whatever you need. And I, I just thought it was a really cool step in the right direction, you know, because that is, I know so many people that, that don't even have mental illnesses, that phone calls are just a thing they avoid. You know, um, so this to me is, you know, pretty big deal. Well, to be a little bit of a devil's advocate, mm -hmm. uh, um, isn't it just another step though, encouraging people not to interact, face, interact with one another personally? Yeah, really. But honestly, that's the way progress is now. The you know, I mean, was that way the cons? Yeah. Yeah. That's what, but. Uh. For some, for some people, I could see it, you know, but it's like for some that, like, there are some people who have like crippling anxiety about making phone calls and stuff. Now, this still might be too sure. much for them, you know. There, I'm sure there'll still be people that talking to whatever the assistant, whatever the Google one is called, you know, maybe that's too much for them. I don't know, but I just like the idea because it it can, it could really help me instead of putting off. um Phone calls for two and three weeks. Like if I had that, I'd I'd be right on top of my my stuff all the time, you mm -hmm. know. So, 
it, it would be a huge benefit for sure in a lot of ways. It's just, it's, I think something that we just need to be cautious of. Um, yeah. Cause we are getting to that point in society that I think it's starting to negatively affect us. Oh, it not having is. as much face to face communication and not having as much just, you know, one on one communications mm-hmm. versus through our smart systems. Yeah. But like me, I have, I talk with people a good amount and stuff. I just, it's just making phone calls terrifying, like not terrifying, yeah, but yeah. I just, I, I put it off. I something I don't know why, but it's just something I do not want to do. And even if you think about it, like the other day when I got all that stuff done, I only made one phone call. The rest of it was in person. Like in person, mm-hmm. I will like, if I'm at the doctor's office, I'll schedule all the appointments, you know? Yeah. Like I'll go in there and be like, I need refills and blah, and I'll, I'll do all the things I need <laughs> to get done. But if I have to call for those things, like I, I mean, I've said it on here before. I've literally put off calling for like blood pressure medicine or my antidepressant for like two weeks because mm-hmm. I just don't want to make that phone call. So it's, you know, there's definitely ups and downs to it, but <clears throat> I thought it was really interesting. Yeah. Um, so. It's it's been really weird though because I've been like really productive over the last few days, and I, I honestly I it's weird because you know I I switched back to the lower dosage of uh, um, Wellbutrin, and it's weird because it's almost like ever since I did that I really feel like I've been in a good pocket. Like, hmm. I feel like I'm right now. I feel like I'm in a pretty good place. Like, and I. Uh- Awesome. The sad part is that, you know, part of my brain is going, get ready, it's not going to last, you know, <laughs> like, yeah, because that's what happens, right. you know, my brain's like, there's going to be another shoe dropping, you know, but um, I've, I've been trying to block that out and just keep pushing forward, you know, and it, it's been pretty cool. I've been really happy that I'm getting stuff done and uh, stuff that I've wanted to do for a little while, you know. And finally I'm crossing stuff off. Like that day, the other day when I crossed five things off my to-do list, man, I felt like I was on top of the world, you know, cause I crossed yeah. off five out of eight things, you know? And the only reason I didn't cross off six that day was because one of the things was taking pictures for those eBay auctions and I had 230 some of them to do. So, <laughs> you know, that took me a long time. <laughs> a lot to expect yourself to get done in a day. Exactly. Um, I did though, oddly enough, it was the next day I started and I got all the pictures taken and I started cropping them that night. I finished them the day after that and I've still got another good day of, you know, um, write ups to do before I'm ready. Cause I'm going to put them all on at one time. Um, so this will be, <laughs> this should be interesting. I haven't put this many things on in a long time, especially not at once, <laughs> you know. Mm. So, um, yeah. But anyway, that's uh, – I was trying to think if there's anything else. Oh, I, I was telling Jen this a little bit before. I, I made another appointment for a neurologist – or <clears throat> I went to talk to my doctor about getting an appointment with a neurologist. And I asked if they could <laughs> refer me one closer because the one I was going to was about 45 minutes to an hour, depending on traffic from here. And, uh, th- the two they referred me to, one's in the same city as the previous one. And the other one is in Adrian, Michigan, which is like 45 or 50 miles from here. So, <laughs> so it's basically similar in time. And mm. it just, <sighs> when they told me, I was just like, <sighs> Uh, but the nurse did tell me that, uh, to call my insurance because she's like, sometimes if you call them and say, Hey, I have a referral and this is too far. She's like, sometimes they will work with other ones or something, you know, they, they can work with oh, you a little cool. bit. So I'm going to, you know, within the next six or seven weeks, I'll do that. And <laughs> no, it's, it's something I want to get, you know, but again, I have to call and, the, uh, the insurance company phone thing is so frustrating because it's one of those stupid tree ones where you have to like, where it's like, how can we help you today? And you have to say what it is. And it almost always takes you to the wrong place. (laughs) Right. Yeah. It's like on one hand, we got Google introducing an AI that can make various appointments for you. But on the other hand, we have an insurance company and insurance companies make tons of money. 
and they don't have something that can work right. <laughs> right. Uh, anyway, but whatever, it's still, all of that is still moving forward. That's all still progress, you know? Yep. Because I needed to make an appointment with my doctor to get a referral to go to the neurologist, you know? So that's done. I've, uh, that step is accomplished. The next step is, honestly, the next step's the hard part for me. Because it's the phone call, which is stupid, because all it is is me calling saying, hey, can you tell me what neurologist I can go to? And, you know, I mean, then technically it's another phone call to schedule it. But you know what I'm saying? It's it's the idea mm-hmm. that this is the part that will slow me down. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm going to try not to let it slow me down, but we'll see how that goes. So, yeah. So I, I think that's about it for me, though. So, yeah productive getting Sounds stuff good. done so obviously that's you know that's my win for the week is I, i've done a lot this week especially for me i mean i've probably done more in the last week than i've done in the last three weeks before that you know so moving the right way awesome, awesome. how about you Hanno? how are you doing oh not bad i had a kind of a fun weekend i the the drag part was sitting in business meetings for um twelve step groups. That was as always uh lovely and interesting, but it's it's always a great practice in patience and understanding. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Something we always need work in. Yeah, oh, oh man, yes. right right off the bat I was like I walked in and it was really great because it's somebody that I know that's like kind of a mentor to me and to other people and, and it has a lot of experience and I saw him losing it with the people at registration. Wow. At registration. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> oh man. <laughs> I was like, wow, David, if you can't even make it past there. Yeah. And so I get up there and I'm starting to see kind of what's going on. And then a friend of mine said, Oh, you should have seen it last night. It was a disaster. Like the poor, whoever it was, was just it was over, they were over their head. Oh, okay. But they wouldn't let anybody help, I guess. Oh, geez, that's the worst. Yeah, yeah they're like, I got, you know, I got it. And it's like, you're failing, <laughs> you know, but, uh, at any rate, we, I get in there and it was like one of the first things, you know, that they, you know, they get volunteers to, to do certain things. And especially when they read things, it's like, didn't you read through this at least once? <laughs> right? I mean, you're literally coming to the mic for the first time. Like hitting words and going, uh, and I just, the people that A, ask them to volunteer, that they don't, you know, suggest that they may practice this. Do you have any difficulties with any of the words? Mm-hmm. And then the pe- people that do volunteer, I just, and I, I just, as soon as my brain started to go in there, I was like, nope, it doesn't matter. Yeah. They're, 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 they're volunteering to do something and that's a really great thing. Mm-hmm. And every and there's lots of patience and time here. So. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Judgment's at the door. Yeah. I <laughs> yeah. will, I will say though, you, you are right about the whole, like, if you're going to read something in, in front of a group of people, work yeah. through it, walk through it once at least because make sure you can pronounce all the words. If you yeah. don't know how, mm-hmm. it's amazing. Your phone will tell you how to pronounce things. So just type in the word and, it, you know, like, right, or if you're on your computer, dictionary.com has a pronunciation thing right next to it, you know, so there's, there's tools to help there, you know, because like me, I wouldn't want to get up there and run into that because I don't, I, I hate seeming like I'm like ignorant to people, you know, so yeah. if I'm standing yeah. in front of you reading, even if I volunteered or something, it's like, I want to make sure that this is, you know, um, Right. I want to, don't want to get up there yeah. and just be like, uh, I don't know what this word is and have it be like the crux of the talk, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, and, and, uh, the night before I went and, uh, met up with, uh, actually from the, our little salty language kick group and met with my friend Veronica. Ah, nice. And, uh, we went out, there was a, a couple groups of people that were getting together. They had this really, they had this old school house. Uh, in the middle of nowhere, kind of, that's been converted into like this little inn, and it's really cheap too. But it's great for like if you're gonna have a big party. Oh, cool! And so they were having a party over the weekend, but I just went out to the kind of the little meet and greet on Friday night and hung out in a. I haven't been to a bar in a while that allows smoking. It's like <laughs> right. It's always oh, weird when I go into one. Yeah, <laughs> and we used to have them here. You know, yeah. it's been a few years, uh, but but it was really they had a great band playing, and 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 it was it was just a, it was nice to get out. But boy, we had some. 
we had some rainstorms. Like I was heading over to uh, where Veronica lives, and as I'm getting closer, I'm like, there's just a giant gray cloud over. Like it was from the clouds all the way down to, oh, I mean, yeah. and it was literally just the city. And we got there, and within like 15 minutes, phones were like lighting up with flash flood warnings. <laughs> it, it just was, it was unbelievable. Even driving home yesterday, I, I, I had one where I was talking on the phone with a friend of mine, and they're like, what is that? I'm like, that's the rain. Yeah. <laughs> I can, and like, I almost pulled over. It was like, okay, this is an insanity, the amount wow. of water that's coming down all at once. Yeah. So it's been a, a it was funny. I was talking to a, you know, here we go, weather again. I was talking to a friend uh, <laughs> of mine who's lived here for like 20 years. And she said, when she moved here this way, it used to be in the springtime was you'd have these afternoon, you know, showers kind yeah. of thing for we, a while. We get them quite a bit here. Like we actually, yeah. this last week, we've had them, what, two or three days. Actually, overnight last night, we had a door just dumping rain on us. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we might get it for a couple, usually for maybe maybe a week, maybe mm. three or four days, and then it goes on because there's a reason this place called Sun Valley because it's usually blue <laughs> sky all the time. Now, I love it. I love the weather. I, I, I really do. I would prefer it if it was the other way. It was called Sun Valley, but it was always overcast. <laughs> <laughs> it was, we're going on like two weeks weeks now mm-hmm. and it's it's just wild you yeah know? my guitars are very happy <laughs> they like the humidity mm, okay um but yeah I had a nice weekend but the, the one thing that get, this last week so um this goes back a while where I'd, I'd mentioned that a whole bunch of us were all supposed to meet in las vegas mm-hmm. and there was a project that that was going to happen right now and my boss is like you know we, we, i really need you to do this because he was going on vacation and so the week before, he laid it out, everything that we needed to do, uh, all the stuff we needed to do and when we needed to do it. And I'm like, okay. And then the day he came before the vacation, and he literally did all of it. I never helped. I was never even asked to help. Oh, wow. And as a matter of fact, somebody, one of the other guys – who was helping had a doctor's appointment that he'd done. He did everything he was supposed to do. He sent the group email out, everything. I have a doctor's appointment this afternoon. He said, I have to go, I have to go to a doctor's appointment. And my boss was like, no, you need to stay here and finish this. Hmm. Wow. And I know. And I was just like, and he literally was in the office almost in tears later that day, just because he's like, well, how, you know, yeah. Well, I, what, did I, what did I do wrong? You know, with the general manager. Yeah. And I just sat there and I was like, I mean, it's truly being around a narcissist is one of the most bizarre things in the world. Mm-hmm. Like it is really just strange. Mm-hmm. And there's so many things that go with it, with this, it's this level of self-centeredness that is baffling to me. I mean, I get we get caught up in things, yeah, but to a point this and and what's really interesting is even the language changes during these periods of time. I notice that there are no we statements. Everything is mine and I. Oh, right. Yeah. Right? And anything that's work related, you know, especially where you would say our, it's like no, it's mine. Uh and and it coincides with these these periods. It's very strange. It's um, really quick, does does that ebb and flow kind of like depression and and stuff do? Like, do you notice now, times? Oh. Okay, I was uh, I was just curious because I've I've been around narcissistic people, but I've never been you know like I've never really paid attention to this kind of stuff. Yeah, and it's now. Um, it used to not. Well, you know, I guess you're right. It's always ebbed and flowed, but it's there's been a lot more flow than ebbing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And, and now it's now it's honestly mostly ebb mm-hmm. and just occasional flow. And and it, and it makes sense with anything that that you know any of our character defects. You know, any and I've I've talked about it a million times. I know when I'm off the beam. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and. Um, they, I, it tends to happen more in stressful situations and, you know, anything with our mental health, anything that happens like that, our right. physical health can be like that too. So, uh, but yeah, it was kind of a bummer cause I was like, you know, we blew, I, you know, I, I had to say no to this trip, all this stuff. And I never, I mean, granted I was being supportive because since he was doing literally everything before he left, I got all of the 
if there was something going on somewhere else on the property, I'd go. T- I went and took care of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it was. Uh, it's it's a strange thing, and uh, yeah, another the guy that I was talking to. Uh, you know, I've mentioned his name a million times. My buddy Andy. I was talking to him on the phone uh, on the way back from this event, and I had one of those moments where I just stopped. And I'm like, "Why do I talk to you at all?" And it was really strange. I was trying to tell a story, and he just kept interrupting me. Mm. And after a while, I just and today I finally like I was at work, and I thought I I was letting this marinate for a while because I, I, I at some point I finally stopped. I'm like, "Why am I having a conversation with someone that keeps?" interrupting and trying to turn the story to something about them. Mm -hmm. Like I literally couldn't finish. And I was reflecting on like when I hung out with uh, Veronica, I had the same exact story with her and and she listened Mm -hmm. the whole time. And then when I was done, she brought something up and it was in the form of a question. Right. And I was like, this is a friendship. You know, this is yeah. how friends talk to each other. <laughs> the reason you know? I interrupt you whenever you're doing that stuff is because if I don't interrupt you, I'll never remember it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? And I don't mind. Uh, I don't mind uh, it getting interrupted for. But yeah. it was like I'd get interrupted for an analogy. You ever owned a horse? And I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about frozen yogurt. <laughs> what? Why are we talking about why are you bringing up a horse? <laughs> but <laughs> it was so strange. Wow. Uh, but, it, it, you know, we talk about a lot on here, you know, about it, you know, friends and things like that. And I'm just finally like, you know, no, I, I, I don't need to. I, there are certain people I don't, know, why do I have people in my life like this? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, yeah. there's a something, you know, I think ebb and flow is perfect terminology for a lot of things. And I think that's how it happens with friendships. Too. Friendships can ebb and flow. It's because at this moment in time, the friendship is not benefit. It's not mutually. Doesn't mean it may not be in the future. So you know there is something to be said for you know you don't close the door. You just maybe close the the screen door and you know, <laughs> leave the main door open. In case- yeah. In case something changes, but you but, know, but, that- but really is this is this is the pattern of conversation, and then and then. <laughs> There was drinking involved. I knew it, and it's like it, then it gets worse too. <laughs> but hey, pie hole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think Sharon's coming by. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, anyhow, that's that's about that was about my week. You know, not too much mm-hmm. else going on, but good. You just you know having fun. I, although well, one thing that happened that was really odd is like when I was coming back on on Saturday night, it was sometime in the afternoon. I started getting a headache, and you know, okay, whatever headache no big deal yeah. but I, it, i'm driving home and all of a sudden i'm like oh light sensitivity oh. um like no. and oh nausea no <laughs> bueno i got home i'm like okay this, you know and, and i you know i i drank a lot of coffee there was you know mm-hmm. i mean yes i ate i ate well i had all that stuff like that but you know who knows weather, whatever it was, either way, there was just, there was definitely, if I went, okay, I could see why this happened. I didn't do anything to stop it. Let's just say once it started, by the time I got home last night, I was just like, okay, I need to eat something and I'm going to lie on the couch and I'm going to relax mm-hmm. and I'm going to go to sleep. And it was perfect. It was like, I watched some bad television, meaning I watched the uh, Star Wars prequels because <laughs> <laughs> they were on TV. Right. And I think I fell asleep at 10 o'clock and it, on the couch wow. you know, with an almost 40 pound bulldog on my legs. Right, right. Of course. But yeah. it was, it was, it was, it was great to have one of those like, oh yeah, this is, and, and, and I don't need to do anything. Thing. I can just relax. Mm-hmm. I can, you know, <laughs> but, some aspirin. Right. And but not doing anything was self care at that point, you know? But that's all yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> it really it really was. It was like, and I'm not gonna feel bad about this. No, no. <laughs> and I've said that before too. Like there's some of that stuff to where it's like, you know what, this is what I have to do. Like I know there's just some days depression wins. You know, like mm-hmm. I'm gonna just lay in bed most of the day today. It's just but tomorrow it's not gonna win. That's the attitude, you know, kind of a thing. So Yeah. You know, but today I'm going to do nothing. Yep. And this afternoon I started feeling the headache come back again. And I was like, okay, this time I jumped on it. I drank some water. I took some aspirin. I'm fine right now. Yeah. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Circumstances were what they were. It happens. Yeah. Yep. I I try to do the same thing sometimes when I start getting them. Like I'll I'll have a headache and I'll, I'll just kind of ignore it. 
and like, ah, maybe it'll go away. Maybe, and it, they never do. I don't know why I still, I still do it. I did it yesterday. <laughs> I was, although I know the cause yesterday, the headache I got yesterday was probably because I was staring at my computer for, I don't know, seven or eight hours. And, you know, I, That'll do you. I didn't take appropriate breaks, <laughs> you know, yeah. and halfway yeah. through, I finally put my glasses on, which, you know, my glasses have anti glare stuffs in them. So, you know, it's like these things help, you know, um, cause I was like, man, I didn't keep putting eye drops in and I'm like, man, I'm using a lot of eye drops. And it's like, of course you are a dummy. You're staring at a computer screen. You know, hmm. you don't blink as much. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Yep. Well, something that kind of popped up, uh, for me this week to kind of segue us into, um, the article we have for today, um, a few people, I have a lot of friends on Facebook. Bragger. And, yes, I know. What kind of <laughs> But that's not my point. My point was, was not that. My point was, uh, um, there's two of them actually reached out for help and expressed, um, extreme sadness and extreme depression like symptoms. You know, I, I don't know their personal life. Right. We're just friends through Facebook. So right. I you're can't. not a doctor. You're not going to diagnose. Right. Yeah, exactly. So we've talked about that stuff before. So I'm not trying to diagnose anybody, but it just seemed that they were extremely sad and they were reaching out. But the responses they were getting, um, of course, were everyone want, you know, you're loved, you know, you're valued. I'm here for you, which are wonderful sentiments and sentiments and absolutely appropriate. But I don't know if it hit the mark based upon on other posts. They're appreciative, but it's really it caused me to stop and really start thinking a little bit about how we ask for help and how can we communicate what we need to another person. And it makes sense and because if, if like with them posting that and then people um, posting a bunch of, like you said, you know, that I'm here for mm-hmm. you, I care, all these things. It's like, you know, everybody who's lost somebody and you're standing in a funeral home that day, everybody's coming up to you, I'm so sorry. And, and they just say, by the end of the day, it's just all blurred together. It no longer really has much value to it. Because you've heard mm-hmm. it a thousand times that day or whatever, you know. So I, I've known, I've done that before with like on Twitter where I'd post something about, um, my depression and I'd get a bunch of people responding. And after a while, I'm almost just like, yeah, okay. And just start ignoring them almost, mm-hmm. you know. So which is, it stinks, you know, it sucks that that is where my head went. So anyway, sorry. I, Interrupted no. you to make an analogy and to make it about me. <laughs> <laughs> At least there wasn't a horse involved. Ah, exactly. dang it. Next time. But no, you're absolutely right. Um, it's a, it's a very similar type of situation. And it's, and it's tough. It's tough to know how to communicate what you need. And it's tough to know how to help someone who's having difficulties communicating what they need. Um, you know, sometimes it is platitudes sometimes it's it's you know just the the simple you're going to be okay Mm -hmm. that you're loved and sometimes it's a little bit more in depth that we need so the article i came across is how to effectively communicate your mental health needs this is from a healthyplace.com um which is actually a very very good um resource and reference um website so definitely check them out Be respectfully and support. Living with mental illnesses are no exception in our mental illness. Because mental illness impacts thoughts, emotions, and behaviors, though, communicating mental health needs can be different. Try these tips for effectively communicating your mental health needs. The first one they talk about is be prepared. Before having a conversation with someone, determine exactly what you're asking for. Perhaps write it down. This will help you get to the right needs met. Now, this is tough because a lot of times you don't know what you need. 
So it requires, this step requires a lot of thought. And sometimes it's as simple as even writing down, I don't know what I need. Can you help me figure it out? Yeah. Because like where I am with, with my stuff, I could probably tell you on most days what I need. But yeah. four or five years ago when I first started, there would be days where I'd be like, well, you know it, Jen, where I'd just mm-hmm. be like, I don't know, something's just, you know, like I'm just not whatever. And I wouldn't have an idea what could fix it or, you know, and stuff. But now I've got better tools to work with. So now I can say, well, this is helping me. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> this is how you can help me, you know, lead me out of this crowd because the crowd's making me anxious, you know. When you started on your your path um, for healthy living, Heno, did you kind of struggle with trying to? Because I'm sure people wanted to help you um, with your sober sobriety and stuff. Uh, did you have trouble trying to communicate what you needed? Well, I I really didn't know anybody, and the, it's kind of the reverse. It was more like the people around me had a hard time how to communicate with me. Ah. Uh. Because it was kind of scary, and they didn't know how how to handle it. Right. Yeah. Right. So I was, and and I I always refer back to this. I th- the more I th- think, it's like I knew nobody, so I didn't like meaning that I didn't know anybody in recovery. Mm, okay. Even when I suspected gotcha. there was something wrong, I didn't have anyone to talk to. Plus, I suffered from the. And, you know, Brian has talked about it a million times is, is oh, I can figure this out on my own. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't even about I, there was no there was no desire to communicate. Maybe the number you know, one distorted thinking yeah. that exactly. I had. Yeah. It's once I was past that part mm-hmm. of it, it all opened up. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then and then but here's the thing is that once I got into recovery, then it was now you've got all these people that are just, you know, basically putting themselves out there if you need anything and then to, to kind of realign the brain and, to, and to actually, you know, like this is what this conversation is about is, is okay. Picking up a phone call, yeah. talking to somebody, yeah. even about something that seems kind of silly is just to say, Hey, you know, and it really came down to, I mean, I wasn't having a problem with drinking. That wasn't an issue. I didn't need to call someone and say, how do you, how do you get through this? I was getting to the point of like, how do I change these behaviors? Well, and like you said, as you were getting sober, you had to learn how to uh, function in scenarios again, sober, because you hadn't had that. So you needed people to, you know, like these are all things that you probably, like you said, probably didn't think of ahead of time. But when you face them, it's like, I need someone to talk to about this because I don't know what I'm doing. You know? yeah, a lot of it was also just like like this whole idea of, of like, all right, I'm probably doing something that I've always done before, but now I'm really aware of it. <laughs> I'm not buzzed or, right. or drunk. Yeah. Like, and it, it's affecting me. Mm-hmm. So now how do I talk about it? And I, I still can recall, this is the one of the greatest things is when I, I share about these things with other people, these stories of like the first time that I, I was kind of like, why do I keep, why do I do this? You know, and, and picking up, the phone and calling somebody that I know that is, you know, and this had to do something about me being a musician. I called someone that I, that I know that was sober, that was a musician. And I was like, you know, and, and just the whole conversation and how he helped me was so huge. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause you needed somebody who could identify with the, it, it, it helps the more um, exact the scenario that you can find someone like someone who's gone through exactly what you went through. You know, when you talk to them and they're like, yeah, blah, blah, and they explain it back to you and you're like, yes, yes, that, <laughs> you know, yeah. like it, it's made me so excited when I talk with somebody about depression or whatever and they'll tell me what they've dealt with. And I'm like, yes, yeah. I I know exactly what that's like because this, this and this, you know, and it's it's awesome when you find that because you feel alone until that point, even though, again, you know, like we're all intelligent people. We all knew we weren't alone. We all know, you know, you knew there were other alcoholics. Jen knows there's other people with bipolar. I know there's other people with depression, but it still doesn't help when you're in the moment, you know, like you just are like, okay, but who, you know, (laughs) like you said, you didn't really know anybody, you know? Yeah. And in, in this case, it's also like, all right. So when I'm, when I was actually at a point of suffering, 
right, and I didn't know anybody. You know, that, that's one thing. That's like, okay, I don't even... And then there's a part you just don't want to admit, you know, I'm not even at the point of really admitting it, you know, mm. but then beyond that, it's like, even if I didn't know somebody, even if, even if somebody wasn't exactly in like me bringing up the musician thing is, is this person may or may not have ever have had the same kind of experience that I had. However, he understands the mind of a musician. <laughs> you know, he understands right. yeah. the things that go along, the insecurity and the ego all at the same time and blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. And, and that's why, that's why I do believe these power, that there's so much power in when, when you're involved in groups online with other people that are suffering the same thing that you are is that what you just talked about, the relating. You are more likely to call somebody mm-hmm. Because at least you know this person has gone through what you've gone through. Yeah, and really quick, there there are tons of these groups out there on Reddit, Facebook. Yep. I'm sure you know pretty much anything you use, like social media wise. There's probably groups of people talking about whatever. Uh, like I said early on, I went to Reddit and just r slash depression. You know, can't get yep. much more basic than that. And I was in there the first night and I'm taught and I was, you know, commenting with people and I was like, wow, they, they get it. You know, these people clearly know what I've dealt with. Or, you know, when I was dealing with the, <laughs> the withdrawal from my effects or when I went off of that, you know, I like R slash effects or I'm not even kidding. That's just how basic it is. And, you know, but if you just type in in Google, whatever it is that you're dealing with and like group you'll probably find tons of online places or local places, whatever, you know? Sure. So, yeah. So it's definitely a tool to utilize as long as you keep in mind, don't let that be a diagnosing tool. Don't, if someone in there gives you advice that may have worked for them, remember that it may not work for you, you know, and, you know, keep, keep the link with a doctor, you know, don't, don't sever that because Reddit has a bunch of groups on it. <laughs> Right, right. This definitely does not take the place yeah. of professional help. Right. And if someone, you know, because anybody on Reddit could say they're a doctor. I mean, there's no proof, you know. <laughs> and that's and the next thing um, that they talk about is stick to what's important. So rather than presenting someone with a laundry list of needs, she's no more than three things that will help you feel better right now. So mm. different things like, um, you know, Obviously, we talked about earlier, be prepared, but stick to what's important. So stuff like, can you call me every day around 7 to make sure that I'm up and getting ready for work? Or took my medicine. Yeah. Yeah, or took my medicine. Something simple like that, just to make sure that I'm getting up and getting moving, because I really struggle getting out of bed in the morning. Mm -hmm. You know, something like that is very specific, and it's something that they can take action on and it's something that will help motivate you. So, you know, things like that, those are, you know, that's the type of thing you want to aim for Mm -hmm. in, in stuff. So when you're asking for help, the next one is frame things positively saying, I love it when we together in the evening, do it several times a week works better than I hate that you don't walk with me very much. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that's so true. Yeah, that's so true. Mm. Very hard because so often when you're in the in the midst of depression or mental illness or even I believe I would you know I can't see from, from personal experience, but even with alcoholism, I can imagine getting very defensive and very getting getting very having a lot of negative emotions as well as trying to bring yourself out of out mm-hmm. of that negativity well not to mention by approaching it as a you know the negative way there you're putting them on the defensive you know because exactly. now they've got to defend Until why not, you yeah are. yeah because now they've got to defend why they're not able to go with you multiple times a week which can lead mm-hmm. to resentment blah 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 so yeah the positive way is much better they still may go on the defensive because some people just do that you know but <laughs> Um, Did you try to say I don't do it enough? Yeah. You know, <laughs> right. I'm already yeah. doing it once. Yeah. <laughs> but And then the last one they talk about is keep emotions in check. Very difficult. These are not easy steps, folks, which, you know, I completely yeah. understand. 
Um, but this one is keep emotions in check. Mental illness often creates strong emotions that interfere with effective communication. Be aware when your emotions are becoming turbulent and take a break. You know, there's nothing wrong with saying, let's put a pin in it. I, I just need to take a few minutes. Or if you don't even feel comfortable with that, say, you know what? Hold on a second. I just got to run to the restroom real quick. I'll be right back. Mm. Potties are, are safe zones, folks. <laughs> mm-hmm. We've all realized this. 40-year-old saying potties. I know. <laughs> but it is. <laughs> the restroom, the potty, yeah. the john, the whatever toilet. you want to call yeah. it. Right. It's got a, most of them have locks on it, and 99.9% of them, you're by yourself. Mm. So, it's my safe zone. Just take a break. Yeah. And honestly, but, like, these tips so far, I, I can't stress enough that the way those steps were, I was able to do those steps is because of therapy. You know, and I'm sure, you know, in medicine, I'm sure too, but yes. you know, the, the therapy gave me better communication skills. It gave me the, uh, the ability to reframe positively. It's helped with, you know, like each of those steps, I can remember sitting in therapy and her working with me on that specific thing. So, you mm-hmm. know, this is another reason why I'm such a big advocate to at least give it a try, you know? Because now I can communicate better. I have better understanding for the people on the outside of this. You know, like there's all these things that have made this, made me realize not only am I not alone, but I need these people in my fight, you know? So mm-hmm. now that I can yeah. communicate with them, yes. they help me because they wanted to all along, but I couldn't, neither side knew how to communicate, you know? Yes. <clears throat> Yeah, and I got. I have to recommend again. You know, get the book Codependent No More. Mm. There's there's sections in there too that deal with communication, and uh, and and they they. What's interesting is that it goes into parts about like like being on the other end of communication. You know, where where dealing with someone that's difficult to communicate with. Mm. But what it did is it made me realize. Well, when am I like that? <laughs> yeah, you know, which was yeah. great. Yeah, you know, that's what I loved about that book is like, even if it wasn't necessarily t- talking about something that I, you know, like maybe talking about someone that I've had to deal with, it also allowed me to get an insight into, all right, when might I be that way as yeah. well? Which gives you a whole different insight because now when you're approaching someone, you you try to like, okay, I'm I need to do, not do these things because this makes me hard to communicate with. You know, this is, and if if you can kind of work both sides and, you know, it's, it's so amazing how two people can know exactly what they want to say. And yet they just are like not speaking the same language. You know, it's, it's so amazing how that happens so much, you know, especially when we're dealing with either any sort of recovery, whether it's mental health or, you know, addictions or anything like that. Um, and even, you know what, even phys- physical problems, like let's say you're part of a group with, you know, that deals with, um, cause you're going through diabetes or, or you're going through, um, maybe a cancer group or something like that, yeah. right? So we're all, we need to communicate with each other because we need help. Uh, people have opened themselves up. If you ever need to talk to somebody, you know, come talk to me. Mm-hmm. But this doesn't mean that we're professionals in communicating with each right, other. Right, exactly. We're typically yeah. probably not. There's a reason why these might be our first times in group experiences or our first times dealing with people on a one-on-one or dealing with counselors or whatever it is. And here's the funny thing. There's a a, a guy that's been sober for a, a way longer than I am um, always, always told me this. He'd, he'd say, I'd, so uh, one of the, the sister programs to Al- Alcoholics Anonymous is called Al-Anon. Mm-hmm. And it was started by um, one of the founder of AA, his wife. And it was for all the wives and eventually husbands of, of people that were alcoholics. And this is where the code, codependency movement came from, was from Al-Anon. Because people would come in with similar problems saying, well, my husband uh, has a gambling issue or, or a money problem or an eating disorder. And so – the and – these, these, now there's like, there's, you know, a, a CODA program for people that have, you know, spouses that are, that have gambling issues or, mm-hmm. or eating disorders or you name it, money problems, whatever it is. But where I'm getting at is, is Clay used to always say that he'd go to Al-Anon meetings because 
I'm making myself available for drunks to talk to me, and now I got to deal with a drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Who better to learn how to deal with a drunk than the spouses of drunks? Right. I mean, he's not that wrong. So much it does. It me, really right? does. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So where I'm getting at is, if we're in these groups, we're all not well. Right. We're all a little bit not well, mm-hmm. which means that. We're probably more likely to get frustrated, not have patience, be irritated, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Because the reason we're here to begin with is because we're not healthy. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny, and too. So that's why. Well, on road to recovery. Go ahead, Hannah. Yeah. I was just saying, that's why your suggestion about the, about the counselor is perfect. Because yes. they can help you, too. Yeah. And. You know, it's funny, too, because, like, when we were talking about the communication, it's like, you know, everybody who's listening, raise your hand if you think you're a good listener. (laughs) Right? So, you know, pretty. I I assume most people listening just raise their hand because we all do. Um, And we might be. But being a good listener to one person may not be the same as being a good listener to someone else or... You know, because sometimes you can hear somebody's problems and you're just like, oh, you know, sometimes you just like with dating or something, you know, like you, somebody will come to you and they'll just be talking to you and you're like, like clear as day, you can see the issue. So you, you know, you get it. So you're more engaged where somebody brings something to you, you don't know anything about, you're more likely to just be sitting there and kind of staring off into space a little bit, you know, like, oh, I'm listening. It's like, no, you're not, you know, or, or like a lot of us do. It's the, you know, we've talked on here before about. Um, you know, you're not listening. You're just waiting for your chance to talk. Sure. You know, <laughs> yeah. And yep. so, yep. Well, last but certainly not <laughs> least, approach conversations with a give and take mentality. Listen the way you want to be listened to, and be supportive like you want and deserve to be supported. Mm-hmm. So, I figured that wraps it up the exact same way what we were just talking about. Yeah, pretty be much. Listener, mm-hmm. And you know, and and do the best to do. To listen and, and be supportive, as well as communicate well using the steps that we talked about. I guess yeah, that's what, one of the great things that I that I've tried to do is when I, I've had certain conversations and I've done it with some of my close friends and and it's been like, okay, I'm going to go out of my way to actively listen. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna do everything I can to not wait, for, you know, not be waiting for my turn. I'm going to actively listen. And the funny part is when they stop and they're like, "Are you still there?" <laughs> nah, like, yeah, I know. Yeah, I get yeah, that I'm, too. I'm, I'm work. I'm working on my active listening. Right. It's like, yeah, I'm listening to you. Yeah, I'm. I'm. You know, <laughs> it is funny though, isn't it? Like when you're on the phone with somebody and they're doing something like that, and it's like <laughs> you almost have to put the uh huh, no, nope, yep. In there, yeah, yeah. like you said, because otherwise they think they may think you're not listening because they may yeah. think you're doing something else, or you know, it's it's kind of funny. But I get the same thing with people that I've talked to on the phone where <laughs> they'll ask if I'm still there. I'm like, yeah, I'm just listening to your story. <laughs> yeah. And speaking of active listening, I apologize to you guys, but I had just a stink bug land on my computer, so <laughs> if you saw me freaking out, that's what that was. So I apologize. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. Pull the curtain back a little bit for you folks. Right. So, but yeah, um, something actually that I think you guys would get a kick out of um, is a, a phrase that uh, analogy, I guess, that is one of my favorites is I don't want to be playing checkers if you're playing chess. The game board looks the same, but the rules are completely different. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. You know, I, I read that one point and it always really resonated with me because it's like, you know, how true is that? How often, especially in communication mm-hmm. and in conversations and listening, you know, we are talking at each other and we think we're playing the same game. We think we have the same topic and the same end goal in mind. But in reality, we're on two whole separate different game boards, Yeah, you know. So. Or even worse, you're arguing the same point, but your your wording is different. You know, yes. you see people like yeah. get into like heated arguments with each other, and you're like, you know, somebody on the outside will be like, "You guys are arguing the same point." I'm like, no, we're not. We're yes. and like, no, you really are, though. <laughs> like, yeah, really, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So exactly. I know it is so so weird. Like I was saying earlier, you know, we can so we can even speak the exact same language to each other and not be speaking the same language to each other. You know, mm-hmm. it's it's so crazy how 
you know, how important this stuff is and how terrible a lot of us really are. <laughs> but it's also because we, you know, it's just, there's just so much to be confused with. Cause you know, you're trying to read body language and you're trying to use, listen yep. to the words and their inflection. And you know, it's, there's a lot to process yeah. there. But, Most of us don't have a lot of practice in doing conversation. Well, yeah, correct. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> So with that, guys, I don't know. What do you think? We good? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, good tips. Yep. All right. Awesome. Well, with that, everyone, as I mentioned at the top of the show, if you'd like to join us, if you would like to talk with us, if you'd like to communicate back to us in any way, shape, or form, you know how to reach us. You can reach out to me on Twitter at Jen's Crazy Life. That's Jen with a G. You can reach us via email at the Crazy Life Podcast dot, or <laughs> Crazy Life Podcast at Outlook dot com. Our website is the Crazy Life Podcast dot Weebly dot com. And, uh, and also on Facebook, which you can reach me. I'm Genevieve McDaniel Chopak, but you can reach me through the Facebook page if you go to the Crazy Life Podcast um, Facebook page. Now, how about you, Heno? How can they reach you? You can find me on Twitter at Ida Heno. You can find me on Facebook at Heno Heiter. You can find, well, I guess since we're doing the Facebook stuff, uh, you can find the show, first of all, at facebook.com slash group slash crazy life podcast. And honestly, that's probably the best way for anyone to reach out to me because I check that. I really don't look at my page often. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, the better way to find me is on Twitter at uh, Stunami. Um, you can also find the show on Twitter at The Crazy Life Pod, where I post when new episodes are available. Uh, you can find my other podcast at, <laughs> nope, at Salty underscore language. I almost said it's Stunami underscore language. Uh, I'm going to kick Tony off one of these days. Um, <laughs> or at saltylanguage.com. Uh, that show is not safe for work. So, you know, <laughs> ear, earbuds and such. Um, if you're using Apple podcasts, please rate, review and subscribe. Uh, that helps us potentially get more listeners. And if you're using Spotify, Stitcher or any other app, if it has a like or share option, please use those. Cause that helps us out too. Um, you know, and also please, you know, uh, retweet our show link or share it on Facebook. Cause I post it in the group every, every time. Um, so yeah, check that out, please. We are part of the Tangent Bound Network, which can be found at tangentboundnetwork.com. And I think that's all the links. So we're not doctors, therapists, trained professionals. If you feel you need help, please ask for, you know, reach out, ask, as we've been talking on here, it's, you know, um, just try not to self-diagnose, um, you know, don't, uh, um, you know, don't, don't, like I said before, don't jump into groups and just assume this is as good as therapy, um, those kind of things. Uh, if you, if you really need a therapy group, look for one in your area, you know, uh, talk to a mental health professional also. Um, Wow. I just totally blanked. See, I told you, Heno, last week. I was like, I keep doing this every time now. <sighs> wow, I cannot remember the next part. Anybody listening is like screaming at it, screaming at me right now. <laughs> um. Oh, if you feel as though you may harm yourself or others, please definitely reach out. Uh, don't wait until it's too late. Um, again, there's, there's so many people out there that have dedicated their lives to helping. There's so many people who just want to help, you know, there's all sorts of support lines on your know, support things online. You know, if you need help, no matter what you're, you know, if you don't like phone calls, that's fine. There's some you can text. There's ones you could just type, you know, via their website. There's, you know, phone calls, there's, you know, going to, there's just all these different ways. So please reach out to somebody, uh, especially, well, not especially, but if you find yourself uh, writing a note of how you would do it, like a suicide note or uh, planning things, that's a great time to reach out to people because that's a giant red flag. Um, <clears throat> and then, as we've kind of been talking on here, reach out to somebody. Tell them you love them. Tell them you care. Ask them if you can help or how you can help. Um, or, you know, like we've just been talking about, ask them about their mental health and listen. So, you know, maybe you'll understand a little better too. 
And, uh, yeah, I guess, well, you know, cause you don't know if you could, you know, you'll make someone's day, make their life better, save their life. You don't really know. So, and then the last thing I want to say is be good to yourself. Seriously, treat yourself as you would treat others. Yeah. Very, very well put. Definitely take care of yourself, everyone. And uh, do the best to enjoy the week that you have in front of you. Talk to you next week.